thanks. Uh, so hi all. Good afternoon, uh, Christianas Chiras, as you correctly pronounce here, and uh, and the work on argumentative explainable AI. Yeah, just first of all, I would like to uh, extend the thanks to Bart and uh, all those involved in organizing the workshop for giving the opportunity for everybody here in this KR community to share their views on, on uh, explainability and in this particular sh session on argu in argumentation and explainability. Okay, so I'll start. Um, so I'm from Ericsson Research and this work uh, has been done with uh, several of my colleagues. So Antonio Rago from Imperial College London, Emanuele Albini uh, previously at Imperial College London, uh, JP Morgan now I believe, uh, Pietro Baroni from University of Brescia in Italy, as well as Francesca Tony, uh, Tony uh, Imperial College London as well. Uh, and so this is a joint collaboration uh, over some time. And this uh, paper is a kind of an extended abstract of a survey uh, paper. So the upshot is that the survey paper that uh, we provide an extended abstract in this in this workshop uh, is uh, similarly called Argumentative Explainable AI, a survey paper uh, that we uh, published at a, each CHI conference this year uh, in the survey track. So here I'm just giving the uh, the links as well, you know, the full citation as well as the uh, the links to all the full each kind of materials where you can see the uh, videos as well as slides, short and long videos as well as short and long slides for the full uh, full paper. Whereas in this workshop, I'm just going to give a, a kind of an extended abstract, uh, maybe not covering all of the aspects. This is just an excer excerpt of a poster that appeared at each guy. Uh, illustrating the paper. So at this point now, if anything uh, happens, let's say I drop that, I have already given you all the links required that you can follow up and, and look at the paper and so on and so on. But otherwise, in the uh, in the absence of such gruesome uh, circumstances, let's just move on to, uh, to what this paper is about. So the outline for the presentation is that I will, you know, this is about argumentative explainable AI, which is explainable AI using computational argumentation. And I'll go uh, very briefly into argumentation frameworks and formalisms, just to recap that for the sake of being self-contained. And then I'll move on to the contributions, uh, which are effectively uh, of, uh, you know, four, uh, four contributions that we have in this survey. Uh, one is that uh, one is concerning classification of argumentative ex explanations. Uh, and with the, uh, that classification is in terms of three aspects. The first one being the types of argumentative explanations. Uh, the second being classes of models explained by argumentative explanations. The third one being the forms of our argumentative explanations. Uh, so the, the, the two are uh, grayed out here in order to indicate that they are not in this extended abstract of this uh, of this paper that published in, in in this workshop, but they are in the full uh, each kind of, uh, paper. And the final uh, contribution, a separate one, is a future research uh, roadmap for uh, explainable AI, in particular, argumented explainable AI. Um, okay, so uh, just uh, I'll start with a you know with a brief recap of, on argumentation uh, for the sake of being contained. So. Argumentation is um, a reasoning paradigm within what I would say hybrid AI. So kind of, you know, within knowledge representation, reasoning definitely and logic based approaches, but, you know, hybrid meaning uh, quantitative approaches as well, probabilistic approaches and so on. So that is, uh, that's uh, hand uh, hybrid. And the quintessential part of argumentation frameworks and argumentation is that of uh, argument graphs. And the, the very basic one is that of abstract argumentation frameworks or uh, abstract argumentation graphs that we've seen Anne Marie uh, and you know Johannes already you know giving some intuition as, as to those. But effectively, still to recap, uh, they are typically formalized and visualized as directed graphs, uh, where we have nodes uh, that are called arguments, and they in one representation represent statements about the world that we you know may want to believe or argue about. And an attack relation, a uh, directed edge relation between uh, between those arguments that is typically called an attack relationship uh, in abstract argumentation, and that represents conflicts among those arguments. 
So a very brief example, suppose we want to argue about something, some sort of, you know, formal system that we're, uh, you know, developing and maybe, you know, a computational system that we're applying, deploying in the real world. And we have some requirements for the system. And so we want to ensure that the requirements will be met. We put forward, we posit a statement, an argument, A, requirements will be met. That's the graph on, on, on the right uh, here. Um, we may have counter arguments against this in the current state of the system. There might be an outstanding issue with the current configuration and, and that might result in the requirements not being. Met. So that's a counter argument against the argument that the requirements will be met. We have other arguments that might, might you know, represent some statements about the world here, C and D. For instance, we have maybe alternative solutions to that outstanding issue that will result, if applied, they will result in uh, removing the issue and meeting the requirements again. And then, we may, for instance, we may have an argument for the resource cap that we have for uh, actually executing those solutions. Uh, that might be an argument against a particular uh, uh, option, uh, alternate solution, and in this case, an argument B on that. The reasoning part of in argumentation is of finding arguments that are collectively acceptable. Um, that represent a coherent point of view. And just for the sake of illustration, in this case, we see uh, in green illustrated in the graph, uh, the so-called grounded extension, which just collects arguments, traverses the graph by collecting arguments and deeming those acceptable that are, first of all, unattacked, and then further propagating the uh, and collecting the arguments that are defended by unattacked arguments in here. Will not spend that much more. I think this is by this time uh, uh, people are pretty much familiar. So abstract argumentation is just a kind of you know kind of quintessential part of of argumentation uh, and type of argumentation frameworks. But there is a multitude of uh, argumentation frameworks, as we know. Uh, bipolar argumentation frameworks, uh, similar uh, uh, abstract frameworks that include two relations instead of one. Uh, the second relation being that of support and with the uh, corresponding semantics of what means for our argument to support another one. Quantitative frameworks. So those could, for instance, also be bipolar uh, uh, argumentation frameworks with also a notion of a numbers or strengths of arguments that represent you know some credence or initial uh, belief in the in the arguments maybe sometimes probability and so on those could be on on arguments on the edges themselves there are various versions uh, of those so kind of a, a a hybrid approach not only symbolic but you know uh, including some quantitative uh, uh, formulations other uh, forms of argumentation exist. Structured argumentation, we have heard being mentioned, uh, you know, there could be, you know, something like case-based reasoning inspired approaches, argument scheme-based approaches, and so on and so forth. So this is uh, about argumentation kind of in general. So let's, let's leave the background there. Just want to go into the kind of contributions of what we do in this uh, survey paper on argumentative explanations. So we do uh, classify uh, uh, argumentative explanations um, uh, in terms of three aspects, as I mentioned. First being the types of argumentative ex explanations, which amounts to uh, how uh, argumentative explanations on argumentative framework maps on the system that is being explained. So if we have a day, you know, we have a system that consumes some data and maybe gives outputs uh, to the user. So that's some sort of AI system, typically. Uh, how an argumentation framework uh, represents or maps onto that system and gives explanation about the outputs or the working of the system to the user. Uh, the second aspect being that of classes of models or systems being explained. So what system does, uh, does an argumentation framework uh, explain uh, or do argumented explanations apply to? Uh, we'll see some examples briefly. And then for the final aspect being that of forms of argumentative explanations, uh, which means effectively how explanations are constructed, what kind of tools argumentatively are being used and how they're delivered to the users. We have already seen, uh, Johannes mentioned a uh, few aspects of that, you know, the uh, things that support argumentative explanation. So this is very much related down here. And I'll finish up with the future research. Roadmap. 
So the main thing is 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 this uh, that is in the extended abstract of this paper. It's about the types of uh, argumentative based uh, argumentative explanations or AF based explanations. So we uh, say that there are uh, we classify the explanations in terms of you know how they map on the systems into three types of approaches. The first uh, uh, one being intrinsic, what we call an intrinsic approach, and it amounts to a uh, native use of argumentation, uh, of argumentation frameworks within the system or the model uh, that is being explained uh, for, uh, you know, for explanations. So model here is a, you know, in the very liberal, uh, liberal sense, it can be a recommender system, can be machine learning model, can be some, you know, knowledge representation model or whatever. So we use it in this way. And uh, argumentation is used to explain what it does. Now, in this intrinsic approach, it, there is a native use, in, intrinsic uh, use of the argumentation within the model itself, i.e. the argumentation is basically the model that does some reasoning uh, and gives some outputs that are then being explained. But the important thing uh, I, want to, uh, I would like to note is that we are not explaining these explanations, the intrinsic type of explanation, do not explain the argumentation per se. They explain the, you know, the task, uh, reasoning task at hand. If it's a recommendation task, we, you know, and it's done by argumentation, we don't care about explaining the graphs themselves. We, we care to explain how recommendations are being given to the user by means of using argumentation. So that's the first one, the intrinsic one. The model is basically an argumentation framework and explanations are uh, obtained there. The second family uh, kind of, of explanation splits into two types and uh, the, two approaches. And the first one is a post hoc approach to explainability. So post hoc uh, explanations are obtained from non-argumentative models. So the model itself is not argumentation based, uh, but um, it provides some representation of the explained model. And the two ways in, in which it can be split is uh, or classified is that the first one is that of a complete representation of the model, where you have a model system that you want to explain and you use argumentation to effectively provide a one to one correspondence between the reasoning, the decision making happening in the model and argumentation framework of some form to, pro to then produce explanations. So that is a kind of one-to-one -one correspondence to a certain extent, and it's a complete uh, post hoc approach. And the other approach is a, a post hoc approximate approach, where you have a model and you take it and then you uh, map it into argumentation framework in a certain way that is not necessarily in one-to-one -one correspondence, but that captures conceptually uh, the important bits, you know, the, uh, and represents the model uh, and the, kind of the reasoning aspects therein, and then provides explanations uh, uh, thereof. So these are the three types of approaches: intrinsic, post or complete, and post or approximate that we classify uh, uh, argumentative explanations into. They are not necessarily mutually exclusive. They are not necessarily crisp. Uh, precisely, you know, models, uh, you know, some forms of explanations might exhibit, you know, aspects of this, this and that uh, at the same time, but this is to give a general, uh, you know, picture and putting them into, into boxes. So I'll, 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 I'll go into a few examples down here, uh, just to illustrate what we mean uh, for each of those uh, classes. So, and first of all, an intrinsic uh, approach to explanations, you have a model that is effectively argumentative and you're explaining the reasoning task at hand. So for instance, we may have a classification task, uh, like in case-based reasoning or in legal reasoning, a classification task where you want to classify some you know, cases, past behavior into, into, into some classes, uh, so kind of you know, typical classification as a machine learning task. And to do that, you, uh, you can use an argumentative model, uh, argumentative system, argumentation framework that represents the information and makes classification. And then you provide explanations of why you classify uh, something as you know, in a particular class uh, using that argumentation uh, framework. So again, not explaining the, the argumentation itself per se, but you know, how you classify something uh, based on past data uh, to uh, mm, based on past data. Uh, so that's one type of approach. I'm not providing the references here. Those are uh, in the papers for these particular papers that uh, represent these approaches. 
Um, the, the, the second approach is that of post hoc complete explanations. So one-to-one -one correspondence between the model being explained and argumentative explanations. So an example could be makes and scheduling where you have a uh, scheduling classical optimization scheduling task you need to allocate uh, jobs to machines put simply so that's the task at hand you may do it with the classical you know optimization scheduling tools uh, but in order to explain it you may use an argumentation framework that maps one to one uh, you know into one to one correspondence some uh, aspect of a scheduling task into an argumentation framework and from that argumentation framework then you extract explanations in one or another form so it is a kind of a one-to-one, -one, you know, a complete approximate, uh, complete uh, modeling of, of the underlying uh, model, but not doing the reasoning uh, itself using our, uh, argumentation. And the final one is the uh, approximate post hoc explanations where we approximate the model using an argumentation framework. So for instance, a uh, movie recommendation uh, system can be, uh, can use a, a typical, uh, uh, kind of uh, clustering uh, and uh, item-based techniques to provide recommendations for users um, uh, based on their previous experience and so on, so on. And that's, you know, you know, so there is a system for that. And one can then approximate this system by extracting the kind of behaviors or, you know, extracting the, uh, the conceptual uh, notions of what items maybe support what recommendations and so on and so on into an argumentation framework in a way that approximates <coughs> excuse me that model but does not necessarily capture you know it exactly in in one-to-one -one correspondence and then one provides explanations uh thereof uh for those recommendations so maybe very briefly intrinsic approaches are kind of good in a way that you know if your model is argumentative then you can use off-the-shelf argumentation-based techniques for explanations, right? Straight there. So that's that's kind of good. We're aware of those. Uh, the potential drawback might be that, well, not all problems are contrary to maybe some 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 what some may may claim. Not all problems are solvable by argumentation. Maybe in principle there are, but uh, you know in reality no. So you need to yeah, actually explain some other models, right? You have a model that solves the problem and you want to explain it, and then you go for some sort of you know representation of that model argumentatively. And the one-to-one -one correspondence or complete explanations are good that you know you have this precise correspondence, and then you know properties map from the original model to the argumentative model. Uh, so maybe you can use uh, those to your advantage for explaining. Uh, however, that is a hard thing to do. You know, mapping one-to-one -one correspondence is non-trivial typically. And here is where obviously the you know argumentative uh, people doing argumentative explanations might benefit from the key works as you know, in, within the KR community at large, in terms of translation between different approaches and so on and so on. Uh, but so, you know, that's the idea. Whereas if one wants to relax this assumption and, you know, not, not to be so rigid, then, you know, post approximate uh, uh, explanations allow one to do that, to approximate conceptual aspects of a particular model, but uh, perhaps at the cost of, um, you know, uh, losing some precise connections between the pop properties and so on. So, um, so I'll just, you know, briefly mention those, the details are in the paper. I don't want to go into, uh, you know, deep down here, uh, but just to mention the other two aspects of, uh, by which we classify the argumentative explanations in, in, into the various types. So, um, the, the second aspect is that of classes of models being explained. So basically what kind of system is being explained by, uh, argumentative approaches. So for instance, uh, intrinsic approaches uh, are used to explain things like recommender systems. They could be machine learning based recommender systems or you know, uh, the typical uh, uh, old school based recommender systems. Um, classification in general, again, if you want decision making in principle approaches, various knowledge based systems, you know, like in knowledge representation and reasoning, as well as, for instance, planning and scheduling. So uh, of kind of optimization planning and scheduling uh, type of uh, type of approaches. You have around uh, and five some minutes. Others potentially. Yes, around very good. Thanks. Uh, good. Um, so uh, with uh, post hoc complete approaches, we can kind of, you know, uh, explain systems such as probabilistic methods, again, decision making and knowledge based systems. Logic programming approaches are very, very typical, you know, logic programming being closely related to argumentation and there being translations from one to another. 
So that's a typical candidate. And then uh, post hoc approximate approaches, again, serve to explain, for instance, recommender, recommender systems, classifications, probabilistic methods, and planning and scheduling, and others. I might be missing some others. You know, we see that the literature on explanations is growing as we speak. So, you know, apologies if, if something is not here uh, already outdated. Uh, the third aspect is that of forms of argumentation-based explanations. We have already seen kind of new types of explanations today uh, uh, being, you know, being proposed. Uh, but at the high level, we, we say that explanations uh, in, in argumentative explanations come in, in, in various uh, forms that we put into the categories of uh, subgraphs. Uh, first of all, so, you know, subgraph of a graph that uh, satisfies some properties and explains, uh, for instance, acceptance of an argument. Uh, or you know the changing the status of the acceptance of an argument dispute trees are a particular form of subgraphs uh, uh i could go into example if, if questions do arise but I'll, I'll skip that later on but I, I do have one just to illustrate that um dialogues or dialogue games kind of as proof proofs uh, or conversations uh, typically following subgraph structure of uh, of, uh, of an argumentation framework to explain acceptance uh, structure of arguments themselves are being used or, you know, dialectical relations to explain ex ex uh, acceptability. Extensions themselves of under various semantics, uh, you know, uh, as to why something is accepted. And then finally, maybe the change in an argumentation framework that leads to different acceptability status is also uh, um, a form of uh, explanation uh, in, in argumentation. And so, as I said, I will not go into the uh, into an example, but I'll just finish off with the roadmap for uh, for kind of argument of explainable AI. Uh, we stipulate that there are kind of three main directions of uh, future work in arg uh, in argumentation for explainable AI. The first of, uh, first one being that of uh, investigating properties of uh, argument explanations. So formal properties as to what they satisfy in terms of graphs and in terms of, uh, you know, computational explainability properties from AI landscape, you know, things like fidelity, robustness, uh, computational tractability and cognitive and so on and so on, things like that, uh, as well as user experiments with those explanations. Some things do exist, not that many, we need to do more, the typical problem for explainable AI but applies to argumentation as well. The second aspect is related to uh, computational aspects of explanations. And Johannes already mentioned, you know, why should we care maybe about the complexity? Well, complexity is important. So there is complexity of, you know, both of extracting explanations uh, from an argumentation framework, but there's also the point of, you know, actually mapping uh, some model into an argumentative model and the com complexity of that. So we should study that and not only for the sake of, you know, knowing the theoretical results, but also for al algorithmic improvements and consequently for implementing efficient computational tools for uh, explainability, because without those, this is not going to lift off. And the final aspect is that of broadening both applications as well as the scope of AI, uh, of argumentative explanations. So, for instance, extending more uh, uh, argumentative explanations to applications in machine learning, explainable AI is kind of pretty hot in there. And we already know that, you know, the feature attribution type of tools of, you know, shot like values and so on are kind of dialectical argumentative in the sense of, you know, pointing towards evidence against and for a particular prediction and so on and so on. So may maybe there is an angle there uh, and people are working on that. Uh, reinterpreting perhaps logic-based explanations, the logic as in SMT-based, you know, first of all, logic-based explanations and so on for machine learning or otherwise uh, other AI techniques, uh, whether those can be reinterpreted in argumentative terms and, you know, some benefits can be found there. And then maybe a specific thing yeah, uh, relating to counterfactual explanations that are, you know, the type of contrastive explanations where dispute trees and, you know, uh, dialogues fall into as well and counterfactual explanations being, you know, what if, and then something else happens. So in the, in the closest world, you know, what, what could happen? And there are definitely connections between argumentative explanations and those quite, quite uh, yeah, striking connections. And I think one just needs to kind of, you know, to begin with formalize, but also, you know, research a little bit more uh, to help with explainability, not only in argumentation, but, and let's say, you know, machine learning, but in other, uh, in other fields, you know, constraint programming, uh, uh, planning, scheduling, whatnot. 
Uh, so this was the roadmap, and I think I'll, I'll thank you. I'll, I'll leave you uh, uh, with this. I gave you the resources. I'll, I think I'll just uh, get back to here in case anybody wants to. Oops, sorry. Uh, visit uh, visit these to see the framework, uh, to see the full paper uh, that we covered, you know, in an extended after here, and the materials that are uh, there on the links given. And I thank you for your attention. I'll happily take uh, questions.